Good morning, everybody. As I said right now, I am at uh, King Abdullah School of Information Technology at the University of Jordan. And uh, uh, everybody is now talking actually not about uh, this. Everybody is talking about X-Smart, you know. Uh, me and other friends, we start a conference called the uh, Conference of X-Smart. Uh, Everything is going to be smart, hopefully. Uh, <clears throat> um, before we start, I will shed some light on uh, some of the related uh, uh, books that we authored, including this book is going to appear uh, in 2018. And one of my co-authors, actually, from Ryerson University. That's why I told uh, Anne about him yesterday. And uh, we started the agenda, Security and Privacy, by Wiley. And this will start uh, January 2018. And uh, we will fly from here to Singapore, where Globecom will be held. And we'll have uh, uh, a launching event there, a reception. So those who will be there at Globecom, everybody is invited to the reception. It's going to be on Thursday between 6.30 to 8.30 uh, there in uh, Singapore. <coughs> this is the, the area of the conference. I am also editor-in-chief of the Wiley International General of Communication System. This is the book which we contributed to Smart Cities and Home, published by Elsevier last year. Uh, this is Principle of Wireless Sensor Networks, a uh, worldwide used textbook in this area. Uh, Modeling and Simulation of Computer and Telecommunication Systems uh, by Elsevier. Uh, Handbook of a Green Information and Communication System by Elsevier. These are recent sample books. Cooperative Networking and uh, Pervasive Computing and Networking uh, from, uh, published by Wiley. And Security of E-System and uh, Computer Networks, uh, published by Cambridge University Press. And actually, uh, last uh, summer, I, I have a position which is distinguished uh, a professor at the uh, University of Science and Technology, Beijing, in China. And they asked me to teach a course there. And I told them, I gave them the syllabus. I told them this will be the textbook. They said, no problem, professor. We have this book in uh, Chinese. And uh, it was sold for $5. In the States, $160. <laughs> And they brought me a copy of the book, and I told them I never written a single letter of it because I don't know Chinese. I know just shi uh, and ni hao. These are the only words I know there. Yeah. <coughs> Wireless at work was until now a, a, a good selling book and used as a textbook. And fundamentals of performance evaluation of computer and telecommunication system by Wiley textbook widely used, and uh, optical lens also by Elsevier. OK, by uh, Wiley, sorry. They will be angry at me, Wiley. Yeah. OK, uh, why people worldwide are interested in smart cities and homes and smart X? And I attended three events in, uh, in Shanghai and two in uh, Changzhou. Asia Pacific are organizing uh, panels and conferences in this aspect, actually. And I was panelist in all of them. And the city of Changzhou in China is doing a good job in that, as well as Shanghai, as I will show you share later. The reasons are impressive economic development in populous countries, especially China and India, and also Brazil. You know, China and India together, they make up for 40% of the world population. These countries, they were a developing nation, and now I consider them a developed nation, although my colleagues in China, they say, no, we are still a developing nation. I, I doubt. I think they are a developed nation, because every time I go to China, I see more progress and more uh, achievement there. Uh, you know, in, uh, China has 1.38 billion people. India has 1.32 billion people. And India probably in five years will become the most populous country in the world. <coughs> Increased use of ICT devices and technology by individuals worldwide. You know, each of us here probably have at least three gadgets. And greater interest in uh, <coughs> environmental protection and in decreasing uh, CO2 emission worldwide, especially in countries that uh, burn lots of fuel, you know. I was once in a panel in one of these uh, populous countries, and he said, if you want cheap products, so we have to burn, you know. Uh, and he said, we produce about 85% of the world products, so you expect us to pollute. Okay. Uh, notice of a rise in number of elderly citizens worldwide, especially in West Europe. China, Japan, and they, they were before everybody, uh, Japanese. And these elderly citizens or senior citizens, they need smart homes, you know, because smart homes is not luxury. It's supposed to save the cost of 
medical uh, health you know, services. Uh, <coughs> rapid increase in population of big cities because the jobs are there, especially uh, in, um, like in New York, uh, Chicago, Washington DC, and in Asia, you're talking about uh, Shanghai has 26 uh, million people, Beijing almost 26, and other countries, they go there because uh, the jobs are there. And these are there, so you need to create something for them. And I know one thing that the city of Shanghai, uh, they are building, uh, are working in 75 smart towns around the city. Uh, reduce uh, budget, economic environment continues to place enormous budgetary limitation on cities, and that requires to go on doing everything smart, and the need to protect our critical resources and critical infrastructures. These terms, they start to exist and start to pay attention to after September 11, and the Department of Homeland Security in the United States is uh, putting lots of emphasis in this and lots of uh, research funding to protect these uh, critical infrastructures and key resources. <coughs> As I said, these include uh, uh, transportation systems, energy, banking, financial institutions, you name them. People talking about smart government, e-government means smart government, smart life, you know. And this figure shows you the variation of these. Smart government, smart transport, uh, safe city, smart hospitals, and so on. Smart parks, to the degree we start saying a smart X. Over 50% uh, of the world population currently uh, lives in the cities. And these cities are accountable for 60 to 80% of the world energy expenditure and CO2 emission and pollution. It's expected by 2050 that the world urban population will rise by about 3 billion, and 70% of worldwide population will be living in the cities. <coughs> Enabling technology for, uh, uh, for smart cities and home or smart X in general, the internet, which already have it, wireless networks, all of its variations, uh, smartphones, uh, including 5G and, and LTE, body area network, uh, internet of things, uh, VANET, uh, you name all of these, GPS, GIS, um, social networks, RF, uh, biometric systems, intelligent transportation system, and others. And uh, when we talk about uh, <coughs> Internet uh, of Things, we, uh, integrate, uh, we integrate things and integrate data and also integrate semantics among all of these uh, devices. And we connect anywhere, uh, anything, anytime, and at any place. This I copied it from uh, the Urban uh, uh, Institute in Shanghai. And uh, I don't know Chinese, but I think it means that we need um, uh, smart homes for adults and for uh, children, for adults, for children, and also the pets, not only for the human being, for everybody. Uh, the overwhelming majority of, of smart homes focus on resident comfort, leisure, safety, uh, throughout the surveillance. A smart home means a home that uh, listens to you, com communicates with you, and safeguards you and your investment modifies and fine tune you to your standard of life, whether it's music, temperature, and so on. This shows you also the main components. So you need ICT technologies, and you need uh, other technologies, including mechanical technologies involved there. <coughs> to implement a smart home, you need to launch wiring infrastructures, uh, installation of switches, uh, routers, uh, unite testing, system testing, uh, verification, and approval. Key ingredients for a smart home, you need sensors, interfaces, network, actuator, uh, control units, uh, and uh, central units, okay. And I think the sensors, self-explanatory actuators, you know, such as uh, the component of environment control system and actuators, the controllers, basically micro computer based, you need interface also to these systems, and sometimes you need to resolve compatibility issues. You need the network, whether it's wireless or, or fixed or optical. Um, you need central unit or control unit. These are alternative, for example, communication means. And uh, in terms, for example, of, uh, uh, I always mix up with the, because the, it should have different color. Uh, for example, uh, network storage. You could use uh, 802.11 or uh, an Ethernet um, 
100 or 100, and so on. Trends, currently, you know, in terms of smart, only affordable in high-end uh, homes. The future as a standard feature in all homes, we, we should have all of that. And I see it coming through because it's cost-effective approach. Uh, depends on vendors, open standard. And that's an issue. People work in this area, they should agree on standardization. And in any technology, it's good to start the standardization process in the beginning of the new technology or system. M maintenance is, is costly. Maintenance costs are, should be low. Uh, standalone and property, the solution is integrated. No adaptability. It should be expandable. These should be systems, should be expandable, scalable, and modular for future expansion and to add more features. Trends, energy management. Most of these uh, smart home systems, they focus on saving energy by using renewable means or by controlling the regular means if there is the, no um, renewable energy means. And the <coughs> uh, cognitive radio technology. And uh, this concept, this technology is relatively new, which has received lots of attention. And it aims at utilizing radio spectrum efficiency using adjustment and modulation technique, coding, and also radiated power. And here, um, dynamic spectral access may be divided into four cases, dynamically moving users into particular active bands, uh, dynamic sharing to take advantage of better propagation, sharing of spectrum to allow channel bandwidth to be increased, improved hierarchical management, and uh, dynamic uh, spectral access can contribute to energy saving of about 50%. Uh, many countries have pursued conversion to digital TV. In the United States, when the United States moved to digital TV, uh, we saved 108 megahertz, which Uncle Sam looked for, for that to sell to service providers. And uh, it's not only saving the money, it is also you improve the quality. You improve the quality and reduce uh, the bands needed for TV. Safety and security, biometric means are becoming more popular to secure access to smart homes, premises, and equipment. And I told you, uh, worldwide people are interested in biometric-based security schemes. And we have a book coming up uh, next year, well, actually in January 2018 from Cambridge on this regard. Health smart home, health smart home is a variant of a smart home which is, which is meant and optimized for health uh, reasons, whether it's for senior citizens or for regular people who are uh, sick and getting aid from the government, for example. And uh, remote digital homes also, one of the ways to meet the rising uh, uh, health care uh, carrying out in digital home is remote health observation, where even insulin can be injected remotely and vitals can be monitored remotely. A broadband over power line communication. This is good for areas that are remotely, where you could uh, have an modem, plug it on the power line, and then you can get internet connection. And uh, <clears throat> upgrading power grid to be smart grid, which involves two-way communication between our homes and power grid. And this way, you could even sell uh, electricity to the utility company if you have renewable energy in your home. And also, you could, uh, you could make sure to buy uh, the electricity when it's cheaper. An increase in, band, in broadband line will provide significant enhancement. A gentleman from University of Calgary, not far from here, he said that United States could increase its GDP by 100 billion with an increase of 10 additional broadband lines per 100 individual. That is uh, being applied in Korea. Korea is one of the countries that have impressive broadband connection. You could find internet anywhere there. <clears throat> this shows you wireless uh, network speed is reaching you know, uh, high data rate, impressive, nobody thought of whether you use uh, LTE or uh, uh, wireless uh, LANs or wireless MANs or others or cellular technology. Japanese, a new approach to smart home after earthquake and disaster. And here they are focusing on energy independent homes and uh, the smart homes in Fukuoka, which is a nice city not far from Korea, is teaching out, uh, it's testing out home network that can monitor every aspect of power usage in the home with the power usage monitors embedded in the electrical device 
And these then can wirelessly transmit results to a central gateway and then to a tablet computer which oversees the entire home. And the technology can also take use of any opportunity to generate electricity using solar panels, wind, and so on. So the key to all of this is monitoring the usage and sharing between different families and community. <coughs> ICT, uh, ICT will, increase, will increasingly look to non-PC secure storage solution, including the cloud and others. You know, there, are, there is convergence uh, of networks and digital home as you see it in this uh, uh, slide. Smart phones, homes, and wireless internet connectivity are turning out to, to be a home automation norm. According to US Consumer Report, over 50% of US households own a laptop computer and more than one half a smartphone. Smart pillow, okay, when, especially when we travel, we like to have a smart pillow. And smart pillow can, uh, <clears throat> can read uh, any book of the person choice to him or her at sleep time and can you play the uh, convenient uh, preferred music. A smart refrigerator, uh, it can tell you the expiration date of time and whether you are low in, uh, where, 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 where you are low in uh, food, whether you are low in uh, milk or uh, others. RFID for digital lock, you know, that saves a lot of ener energy and lots of time. RFID <coughs> can also be used as digital door lock by just tapping the RFID key or the key fob to the reader button. You can activate, authenticate, and lock your door, which saves you lots of uh, efforts uh, and hassle if you uh, lose the key in the standard uh, traditional norm. Smart sofa, this contains uh, a lot of special utility that improve the human involvement when viewing TV, movie, etc. And it will move towards the position which makes you comfortable. A smart map under your shoes, it can detect who is in the home is the owner or a stranger. Okay, and that could be a way to detect uh, intruders in the house. Enhanced connectivity using Internet of Things. Uh, biomedical smart clothing, and these could be uh, embedded in the body or close to the skin, or they could be in pockets as shown here. Uh, <coughs> smart cities can be identified uh, using six dimensions, smart economy, smart mobility, smart environment, smart people, smart living, and smart governance. Use of wireless sensor network for smart cities for all kinds of applications that go down to uh, garbage collection and detection. Acc challenges. One of the challenges is accidentally smart home, which is an already existing home that cannot accommodate and integrate a new technology. Okay, so it's better to build it from scratch, but if you already converting a classical home to uh, a smart home, then you may get into that situation. Any prepared interoperability, that's also an issue, especially there are no standards as we speak. Uh, special implication of smart home, that the challenge here, uh, <coughs> privacy, we're talking about privacy and is an expert on privacy, uh, labor saving, and good parenting. These are issues uh, brought by this, uh, these systems and these technologies. Reliability, that's an issue. Adaptability and flexibility. And uh, it, it must be able to interf interface with other supplier device and accept add-on, okay? And must also be upgradable and scalable. Uh, ease of use. You need to have them ease of use, especially you have too many electronics and computation uh, gadgets and so on. And uh, affordability should not be expensive, of course. And as you know, the scale grows, I think uh, economy of scale will help in this regard. Misunderstanding who is in charge of which service, because the devices and services, they are offered by various entities. So if there is a problem in one entity, you may call the wrong person and you may um, you know, that, uh, or the wrong entity, and that entity may get bad uh, public relations. So that is an issue. So it's good that all of these services offered by one giant company. Standardization, this is an important issue. Okay. As I said earlier, you know, any technology uh, before or by the time it starts to be developed, community should start putting uh, standardization. Otherwise, it will be late to fix and we'll have fragmentation and standardization. Uh, <clears throat> bandwidth, 
The mean estimated bandwidth uh, for a smart home is 70 megabit per second. Is it achievable? In some countries, yes. The good news is that we are currently witnessing huge bandwidth availability due to progress in bandwidth technology, in optical technology. And I see it offered everywhere, even in developing nation, I saw that. Sample of some of our related work, we devised and developed new efficient, a new efficient internet of things, based security alert system for smart home, and we built the hardware related to that. We rely on the Raspberry Pi, which is a series of small single board microcomputer system. And we have a camera and sensors to, uh, to detect the movement of intruders and then take the image and send an email to the owner or the, the police. Uh, these are the main components, Raspberry Pi, and they have a processor there and webcam and uh, a pyro infrared or passive infrared sensor there for movement. This shows you the main component there. We have three scenarios. Uh, the first scenario is that there are no intruders there. Second, senora, sec second scenario, intruder enter. So shows the email sending procedure after the intrusion detection there. And uh, this is the overall uh, architecture of the proposed approach with function of all models shown uh, in the figure there. This is the intruder that uh, we detect uh, his or her movement. This shows you the hardware involved. We have webcam, of course, and uh, we have uh, a pyro infrared sensor detect, uh, detects uh, any inactivity in home, in home and instantly sends signals and captured images uh, to the uh, hardware. Uh, the sensor is used here which is uh, frequently utilized as part of movement detectors by measuring infrared lights that is transmitting from the object over a uh, sensor range. This is the flow chart of the system. And this is the working hardware model there. And uh, as I said, we have, we tested the system under uh, three scenarios. Uh, the first scenario, we monitor the room with uh, sensors and camera. Scenario two, uh, uh, intruder is detected, scenario three is sent. Here is the picture of that. These are the pictures there. And uh, other work related to smart citizen home, we uh, devise a scheme to, uh, uh, to improve the coverage of wireless Wi-Fi. And uh, we called it signal to noise ratio waveform power adaptation uh, algorithms there. And uh, here, basically, we improve the distance, for example, here from 339 to 385 and so on for the rest. I'm told I have five minutes. When we validate the work, this was uh, carried out with my former graduate students who was working with SRI. He's now a CEO of a company in uh, Maryland. <clears throat> when we uh, compared uh, our simulation model to the measured, you see, for each case, it is almost closed. The difference was less than 5%. So that gives good validation to our simulation model for the system. And uh, this shows you, for example, the performance in terms of the delay. So our system reduced the delay. The normalized delay is lower than the blue, which is the, uh, the standard uh, algorithm or protocol. In terms of a throughput, ours uh, higher throughput, which is the blue there in uh, most of the cases. Uh, we also devise efficient energy ad hoc on demand uh, in mobile ad hoc network. And uh, basically, we propose here energy efficient ad hoc on demand routing protocol that balances energy load among nodes so that a minimum energy level is maintained among all nodes and the network life increase. So the idea is to increase the life of the network. We focus on increasing the network life by distributing energy consumption in the network. Uh, <coughs> This is the system we modeled it using Glomosim, which is a popular simulation tool. And these are the setting of the system. And here is uh, the performance in terms of energy uh, consumed versus time. Uh, this is our algorithm, which is this color, I think uh, purple color. It is lower than the standard ad hoc on demand distance uh, vector routing. Uh, this is uh, the network life. This is ours, the purple color. It is uh, higher than the standard ad hoc on demand distance vector routing. 
And uh, this is the energy uh, consumed versus uh, the number of nodes. And ours is the purple, and it provides less energy consumed compared to, compared to its competitor at a demand distance vector routing. And uh, uh, to, to, to summarize, you know, smart homes and smart cities, these technologies, um, they are there. There are challenges in the way. But I feel comfortable that this technology and this system will move to the mainstream. Thank you so much. Thank you.